What's going on dudes, Lebens Mute here. Today I'm going to go over 10 amazing tips and tricks any player may need for success in Act 2. The timestamps for each section as well as the topics will be in the description below. If you're looking to avoid story spoilers for some areas, I will put a warning before the footage. Act 2 is well known as the longest part in the game, and is the time players should be rounding out their desired builds and figuring out what works best for them. There are 10 topics to get through, so let's get to it. The first point I would like to touch on is a frequent question I see on the subreddit. I'm stuck, where do I go next? Here's a leveling map I pulled from VideoWiki, which I agree with for the most part. You'll begin on the sh southern shore of Reaper's Coast at the start of Act 2, making your way north to Driftwood, where you'll want to speak with any NPC you can to get quests and level up to 10. Head west from there and explore, going through Wrecker's Cave. Afterwards, you'll want to head over to Stone Garden at level 11 and complete some activities there. At level 12, you should make your way northeast toward Paradise Downs and then south into the Black Pits, finally reaching level 13. At level 14, you can take on the Mill to the north, the Black Pits Cave and Harbor to the south, or the Monstrosity to the west of Cloisterwood. Lastly, you should wrap up the act by completing Blood Moon Island quests and defeating a very large and plague-ridden monster to the far northeast of the map. Once you're satisfied with your progress, head on through to Act 3. Next up, we have the Vulture Armor. This gear is quite easy to get from the beginning of the act and is wonderful for any finesse-based character. For me, it often works well throughout the whole act. Up northwest of where you find Meister Siva on the hanging platform, there is a witch's house you can either lockpick into or find the key on the side of the house to enter. On the table inside, there is a dwarven excerpt you must pick up and read to get the options to complete the quest properly. Next, we need to gather some ingredients. We'll need a source orb, any earth essence, and a piece of raw mutton. The mutton can be bought from Thune in Driftwood, while both the source orb and earth essence can be obtained in Siva's basement. Once collected, combine them and you'll get your source infused meat. To the west of Driftwood on a cliff overlooking the town, there is a symbol you must place the meat. The beast will spawn once placed and you must answer the five prompts correctly or you'll be attacked. Judges your heart. Act with honor or be consumed. The beast leans closer. It's the faithful must offer an answer. What is your The creature perks up. Why? The vulture drags its talent. Your right is true. Completing this part without violence gets you the five blessed feathers where you must combine each one with a simple piece of finesse armor which you can pick up in driftwood. I'm alright, as long as I don't think about it too much. Among. Now for all of those warriors out there, these next two tips are for you. The Anne May Fallon Belt may be obtained from Eithnit in Cloisterwood for a generous sum, providing a great stat increase, including plus two warfare. Be careful when talking to her not to state you side with the Black Ring as she will attack you if you do. This next piece of warrior gear can be found on Blood Moon Island, most easily accessible after saving Meister Siva and obtaining Spirit Vision. Once you head north to the seemingly broken bridge, cast Spirit Vision and use your movement abilities to leap across safely. Head even further north, being careful to avoid enemies if you're low level, then circle around to the west side of the giant pulsating tree in the middle of the island surrounded by Black Ring Summoners. There will be a body of a Black Ring Destroyer that you can sneak up onto the west side, carefully avoiding the mages, where you can obtain the Destroyer Gauntlets, providing a great stat bonus for any warrior.
Next up, we've got the Teleporter Pyramids. These pyramids are very useful for getting around or reconnecting your team. The first two can be found in the prologue to Act 2 on the Lady Vengeance in Dallas's cabin, one on the Table of Riches, and the other in the cellar with the Geists. One is within the cellar that requires 22 wits to discover on the northeast part of Blood Moon Island, stored inside the Tenebium Trest, requiring a thief to lockpick. Finally, the fourth and final pyramid can be found in another Tenebium Trest, just under Riker's Mansion in Stone Garden. To help with progress, I like to put a single pyramid in Meister Siva's basement so I can teleport back at any time and get source points quickly. For the last item related tip, we have combination skill books. They combine two individual spell schools into a single one, creating a hybrid skill for those using several schools. However, they are limited in which ones you can be combined. First, you'll need to choose one of the elements available, Geo, Arrow, Pyro, or Hydro. Second, you'll need to pick from one of the any other schools you can combine with. Once you have a book from whichever you want, combine them to get your desired skill. You can also do this with source skill books. One of the few exceptions to this would be the Summoning plus Necromancer and Summoning plus Geomancer, where you can obtain Blood Infusions with Necromancer for your Incarnate, and Oil Infusions when combining Summoning plus a Geomancer spellbook and an Oil Barrel. Everyone's favorite knight in shining armor, Gareth, has parental issues we need to resolve in one way or another. If we head straight to their house after getting off the boat, they will be dead, and Gareth will somehow beat us there. If we wish to save them, we need to find Gareth to the north inside of a small hut with the Magister Jonathan. We need to convince Gareth to kill Jonathan here if we are to save his parents, which will require a persuasion check or by mentioning something along the lines of the time of timidity is over and a rephrase regarding a man of action to complete the check. Once done, we can head over to his parents' house in Paradise Downs and see them standing outside by the wagon. Inside, there will be several level 12 Void Woken. When slain, the parents will provide you with the Hanig's Ring. Heading back to Stone Garden, there is a small pavilion off the way on the southeast side of the graveyard. Casting Spirit Vision with your character near the center will cause your character to be sucked into an alternate arena confronting an Elven Scion and his minions. This fight can actually be pretty tough unless you're prepared, but provides great loot in the end. Make sure all of your characters are in the arena by casting Spirit Vision with them to enter if they are not already there. Possibly mine and everybody else's most hated fight in the game, the Black Pit Squander where we are obligated to try and save Gwydion, but he cannot save himself even with backup. He loves to cause trouble. Here we'll need to dig up the chest to the south nearby the merchant and place it in front of the tent. If we place other objects here, he will try and destroy them to get out. Once the chest is placed, we can head up to the scaffolds and either teleport him out before finishing the speech with the White Magister or afterwards. If we do it before, he will not spawn the Voidlings unless he casts Chain Lightning. If done after the speech, he will cast Chain Lightning and will trigger the Voidlings. For our final tip, we'll be tackling a cheesy way to defeat Alice in the northern part of Cloisterwood. Without being prepared, she's pretty scary. But if you have a character with teleport and another ranged character that can stand near Jay Han, she can be squishy fodder. 
have one stand near Jahan and another just outside of a range with teleport and send her down to the beach where she'll try to make her way back via a pit stop to Jahan's house where she will meet her demise. Act 2 is a point where many players tend to drop out due to the daunting difficulty increase, but I'm hoping some of these tips will help you succeed in progressing your playthrough. If you found this video useful, please le consider leaving a like and subscribing. If you have any suggestions or would like to leave a comment for me, do it down below. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.